Hey there, folks, it's Kenny. A viewer suggested I create a video about the power struggle between Empress Dowager's relatives and the eunuchs. Okay, today we're going to talk about one of the most fascinating and dramatic periods in Chinese history, the Eastern Han Dynasty, and the power struggle between the Empress Dowager's relatives and the eunuchs. Now, you might be wondering what the heck I'm talking about. Well, let me break it down for you. During the Eastern Han Dynasty, there was a constant battle for control of the imperial court between two groups, the powerful families of the Empress Dowagers and the eunuchs. The Empress Dowagers would use their influence over the young emperors to appoint their own relatives to positions of power while the eunuchs would manipulate the emperor to gain more political influence and control. It was a vicious cycle that led to a lot of backstabbing, intrigue, and drama. So, if you're a fan of political drama, power struggles, and ancient history, then you're in for a treat. Get ready to dive deep into the world of the Eastern Han Dynasty and witness firsthand the intense battle between the Empress Dowager's relatives and the eunuchs. This is gonna be epic. Now, let me tell you about the political climate that unfolded during the Eastern Han Dynasty in China, known as the struggle between the Empress Dowager's relatives and the eunuchs. It all started in the middle of the Eastern Han Dynasty. From Emperor Hor onwards, all rulers were young when they ascended the throne, allowing the Empress Dowager to control the government through the method of behind-the-curtain governance. The Empress Dowager promoted her relatives, resulting in the relatives controlling the government. When the emperor grew up and realized that the relatives were monopolizing the government, he conspired with the eunuchs to take down the relatives. However, the eunuchs ultimately gained power after the emperor's death, and his young successor was also controlled by another empress dowager through the same method. This vicious cycle continued over time. During the period of the relatives and eunuchs' monopoly on power, the political system of the Han Dynasty became increasingly corrupt. Both the relatives and eunuchs used bribery, looted goods, and annexed land. The wealth of the relatives was enormous, with Liang Ji's confiscated property amounting to more than 30 million, which was half of the Han Dynasty's annual tax revenue. The eunuch group also used their power to receive bribes and lived a decadent life. The alternating monopoly of power between the relatives and eunuchs was a sharp manifestation of the internal contradictions of the ancient ruling group under the autocratic system. The complete autocratic system concentrated power in the hands of the emperor, who became the embodiment of all power. Those who coveted power attempted to hold the emperor hostage. The development of the aristocratic political forces appeared in the form of the relative's monopoly of power, which sidelined imperial authority. The emperor had to turn to the eunuchs to maintain his power, allowing them to monopolize it. Both the relatives and eunuchs aimed to control the emperor, or establish a young monarch to continue manipulating the government. They also eliminated dissidents and collected the wealth of the people. To the ancient literati, eunuchs were parvenus with low status. Therefore, in the struggle between the empress dowager's relatives and eunuchs, the relatives received more support from the literati. Now, I want to talk about a wild ride in Chinese history known as the Disasters of the Partisan Prohibitions, which is caused by the struggle between the Empress Dowager's relatives and the eunuchs. It all went down during the Eastern Han Dynasty when a group of government officials and aristocrats weren't too happy with the eunuchs who were in charge. You see, during the reigns of emperors Han and Ling, there were two factions fighting for power, the eunuchs and the relatives of the empress. The eunuchs held significant power in the imperial court and had a reputation for being corrupt and abusive. Some of the most notorious eunuchs included Hu Lan and Wang Fu, who are known for using their power to enrich themselves and their cronies. On the other side were the Empress's relatives, who were seen as more virtuous and honest, but they weren't alone in their opposition to the eunuchs. A group of scholars and intellectuals, known as the literati in Chinese, also stood up against the eunuchs' tyranny. The literati formed an alliance with the empress's relatives and launched a fierce attack on the eunuchs. They accused the eunuchs of being corrupt and incompetent and demanded that they be removed from power. But the eunuchs weren't going down without a fight. They took a brutal crackdown on the literati, with many of them being imprisoned, tortured, or executed. The eunuchs power only grew stronger, and they continued to dominate the imperial court for years to come. Many people believe that the disasters of the partisan prohibitions had a profound impact on the foundation of the Han Dynasty and laid the groundwork for the eventual downfall of the Eastern Han Dynasty, as well as the Yellow Turban Rebellion.
In the early Eastern Han Dynasty, there was a suppression of the power of the extended family of the emperor's relatives. Wang Meng, who came from an extended family background, had generations of family members in power, controlling the country's operations. However, this ultimately led to the overthrow of the dynasty. Therefore, after the establishment of the Eastern Han Dynasty, Emperor Guangwu of Han began to suppress the power of the emperor's relatives. Emperor Guangwu of Han, Liu Zhu, himself came from a local wealthy family. His maternal clan, the Fan clan of Nanyang, was a prominent local clan, and his two wives' clans, the Guo and Yin clans, were large clans in Jinding and Bai Yuing respectively. Emperor Guangwu's group of supporters were mostly from the wealthy clans of Nanyang and Hebei. When they joined Liu Zhu, they brought with them their family members and guests, numbering in the thousands. Eventually, people like Du Yang, Ma Yuan and Lang Tong, who had been holding out in Hoshi, switched sides to support Guangwu Emperor. In order to win over these Hoshi wealthy clans, Liu Zhu entered into many marriages with them, cementing the relationship for generations and consolidating his rule. To strengthen the alliance with the wealthy clans, the Eastern Han Dynasty established a system of selecting consorts with daughters from prominent clans as the targets. They were required to possess both virtue and ability, a standard that was often monopolized by the group of Confucian scholars who valued education. After the establishment of the Eastern Han Dynasty, Liu Zhu began to suppress the power of the emperor's relatives and consolidate imperial power, given the previous usurpation of the throne by Wang Mang. During the Western Han Dynasty, the power of the emperor's relatives was controlled by the Grand Marshal and Grand General, who controlled the military power and also led the Shang Shu Department to control the central government. After unifying the country, Emperor Guangwu began to reform the system and control the military power. He first lowered the status of the Grand Marshal and Grand General, placing them under the three officials. At the same time, to limit the control of the Emperor's relatives over the Shang Shu Department, Guangwu Emperor abolished the system of having the Emperor's relatives lead the central government gradually moving the Shang Shu department away from them and replacing them with eunuchs. As a result, the power of the political center shifted to the Shang Shu department, which communicated with the emperor through eunuchs rather than the emperor's relatives, changing the situation of the Western Han Dynasty's rule by the emperor's relatives. In order to guard against the emperor's relatives, Emperor Guangwu even did a significant thing in his later years. He moved Empress Lu out of the ancestral temple and replaced her with the worship of Empress Bo, Emperor Wen of Han's mother. During the reign of Emperor Ming of Han, no one dared to overstep the boundaries of the emperor's relatives. This was even more pronounced than during the time of Emperor Guangwu. Emperor Ming of Han showed both kindness and power, and he also emphasized education, allowing the children of the emperor's relatives and supporters to study Confucian classics. Do you know why the struggle between the relatives and the eunuchs happened in the first place? It turns out that the root cause of the problem was the short lifespan of the emperors. If you flip through the history books, you'll notice that the average lifespan of the Eastern Han emperors was pretty short. In fact, many of them ascended to the throne while still young, unable to rule on their own. This created an opportunity for their mothers, the Empress Dowagers, to interfere in politics. However, the Empress Dowagers couldn't manage the affairs of state directly, so they relied heavily on their own relatives to control the government. This led to the rise of the, the Empress Dowager's relative seizing power phenomenon. When the emperors grew up and wanted to assert their own power, they often turned to the empress's family and the eunuchs to help them reclaim their authority. This, in turn, led to the eunuchs and a new group of the emperor's relatives gaining power. When the emperor died, a new young emperor would take the throne and the cycle would start all over again. The struggle for power between the emperor's relatives and the eunuchs continued throughout the later period of the Eastern Han Dynasty, leading to a vicious cycle that was hard to break. So why did the emperors have such short lifespans? Some people believe that it was because of the lifestyle of the ruling class. They indulged in pleasures and excess, leading to weakened immune systems and a higher risk of disease. Furthermore, they tended to marry and have children at a young age, which led to weaker offspring. This cycle continued, with each generation inheriting the same weak constitution and unhealthy lifestyle. Of course, this is just one theory. Another possibility is that some emperors may have had a genetic predisposition to a shorter lifespan. For example, the first emperor who suffered from this problem was Emperor Zhang, and some speculate that it may have been related to his mother's genes. And that's a wrap. Folks, I hope you enjoyed our deep dive into the power struggle between Empress Dowager's relatives and the eunuchs during the Eastern Han Dynasty. If you like what you saw, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up.
Your support means everything to me and encourages me to keep creating more content about Chinese history, culture, and artifacts. And hey, if there's a particular topic or aspect of Chinese history that you're dying to learn more about, leave me a comment below. I'm always looking for new ideas and suggestions, and I'd love to hear from you guys. So thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.